Hello and welcome to this Illustrator course. Today we're looking at bisecting a angle in Illustrator. But before we begin, let me introduce you to my Illustrator courses at Udemy. You'll find coupons in the description below for all of my courses and these are always at least as good as anything Udemy can offer and typically they're better. I also have courses at Skillshare and I've included a Skillshare coupon for you to sign up for Skillshare to get access to thousands of classes, including over 200 of mine. So let's swing back to Illustrator and this is what we're going to do. We're going to take an angle and this could be any angle and we're going to bisect it. Now I'm going to trash that bisection line because I just wanted to show you what the aim is and we're going to do that with this angle. So you would open a document or you would create a document that has the angle that you want to bisect. So I'm going to lock down these two lines and then we're going to draw a circle. So I'm going to the ellipse tool I'll just drag out a circle. It doesn't need to be very large, but what it does need to be able to do is if I put the center of the circle here, well, it needs to intersect with both of these lines. So my circle has no fill. That's pretty important. And I'm going to drag it into position so that the middle of the circle is over the point where the lines intersect. I'm going to select view and then outline because that's going to allow me to see this more clearly. I'll zoom in to this point because I need to make sure that I get it right. And this little X sort of thing here is the middle of the circle. And so I need to move the circle. I've locked down the two lines. So the only thing I can move is the actual circle. So I'm just nudging it with the arrow keys and moving it down was just perfect. That's a good position there. Moving it across, not working. There's some value between these two values that I need to be at. These are X values. So you can see one X value. This one is 999 and this one is a thousand. Well, I think 999.5 is probably going to do it for me. So there I have the center of my circle immediately over the intersection of these two lines. So I'll lock it down. I'll also press control zero to zoom back out and I'm going back into preview mode. Now, if you were to do this on a pen and paper, this is exactly what you would do. You would put your compass on this point and you would draw a circle. And then you would draw two more circles the exact same size. So these next two circles have to be the exact same size. They need to be drawn with their midpoint on here and here. And where they intersect is going to give us the line that we're going to use for our bisection line. So let's go to the ellipse tool. Let's click in the document. And I'm thinking that probably a circle of about 600 pixels in size will be perfect. So let's just make one 600 pixels in size. We know how big it is and that's going to help us when we need to draw the second one just in case something happens here. OK, let's just nudge it into position as close as we can get it. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going into outline view because it's just easier to see things in outline view. So this is the center of the circle. You can see it's just not quite in position, just moving it up. That's reasonably good. And obviously it's not quite going into position if I hit the left and right arrow keys. So it needs to be this X value plus a little bit. Well, the X value is 847.92 something. Let's try 848. That's pretty good. The Y value needs to be between this value and this value, but closer to this one. Well, this value is 1426 and this is 1425. So I'm thinking probably 1425.75 might just about do it. And that's near enough. If you need yours to be a little bit more accurate, then you can come in and continue to fiddle with these values until you get it in the exact right position. I'm just adding sort of 0.5 here and there. I'm pretty close to, I'm going to call that good. It is just going to depend on what level of accuracy you need to use. Once I've got that in position, control or command zero. And then we'll choose view and then preview to go back into preview mode. I'm going to make a duplicate of this circle and I'm going to immediately lock down the one we were working on. And then we'll take the duplicate 
and place it so its midpoint is over the intersection of this circle here and the line. Now if you need to, you can also turn visibility of this circle off for now because that's just going to hide it, won't get in your way. That's the one we've locked down. We're just working on the one that we can still select. Zoom into this point and go back to your view and outline view. Just much easier to work in this view. The only thing we can move is the circle that we're working with. So it's pretty well in position. I might be able to tweak it just a little bit. I'm just looking at my Y values. That's 1410.26 and this is 1411.26. So perhaps 1410.56, let's see what that looks like, maybe a bit less. That's pretty bang on. I'm just working with these X and Y values to adjust them until the center point is right in position over this line and the visible circle. So let's lock that down before we do anything else. Let's go to view and then preview and control or command zero. Now we can turn everything back on. The line that is going to bisect this angle is going through this point, this point, and it's also going to go through this point. If we extended it, we don't need to do that. Let's zoom in so that we can draw that line. So I'm going to the pen tool. I'm going to click on this anchor point here, this intersection point, and then I'm going to view this and click. I'll press escape. I need to double check that everything's correct. So I'll go to outline view. I'm going to zoom in here to make sure that I got my starting point correct. And I did. And I'm going to zoom in here to make sure that this crossing point is pretty good. It's not great. So let's see what we're going to do. I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to the direct selection tool. You need to be on the direct selection tool and you're just going to select this anchor point because you don't want to adjust the anchor point that's in the correct position down below. You just want to address the anchor point that you have selected. So I'm just going to press the left arrow key and then the right arrow key. So the value that I need is sort of halfway between each of these and I'm looking at this point here. 966, 967. Well, I think I'm going to go 967 with no numbers after the decimal point and see how that looks. And that's pretty good. It might be just a little bit more, maybe 0.1. And that's excellent. So let's choose view and then turn preview back on. Let's press control or command zero. And we now have a line which bisects this angle. Of course, we don't need any of these circles any longer. So I'm just going to turn visibility off of those circles. And so this line here is bisecting this angle. It's dividing it into two equal angles. So thank you to the subscriber who asked how you would bisect a line in Illustrator. And that's how you do it. You just take the pen and paper equivalents and just render it in Illustrator. Now you might be curious as to what you're going to do if you have a much larger angle. So if you have, for example, an angle like this where you're looking at to bisect either this part of it or this part of it, doesn't really matter which you're bisecting, the line is going to be in the exact same rotation. What you'll do is create your circle with its center over the intersection of these two lines. Then you create the next circle and its center has to be where the line and this circle intersect. It just needs to be a nice big circle. Then you'll create a circle exactly that same size with its center on the line and circle intersection. And then where the intersection is here, draw a line through here to here and that will give you your angle bisection. If you drew a line from here to here, then you'd just bisect this larger angle. So I've bisected the top angle. You could just as easily bisect the bottom angle. And it's really quite simple to do once you understand the process.
I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.